Hello my dear friends, Risa here from The Nutrient and welcome back to another video. Today, I actually wanted to answer and address one of the questions that I most get asked and that question is, what is my cooking process? If I meal prep or like, what does that look like, the, the behind the scenes? I'm gonna share a little secret here with you. Honestly, for the most part, when I arrive in the kitchen, I don't really know what I'm gonna be making. I'm not someone who plans ahead when it comes to food, at least. I did try that route a while back and it was just very stressful for me. I had set like a little plan for myself, right? So I would research my recipes, I would plug it into kind of like a meal prep template where I would plan all my meals for the week. Then I go looking for the ingredients and, you know, like the entire process of the advice that you will typically see um, when it comes to meal prepping. So I tried that for a while, but to be 100, that process really was not working for me because I think that I'm more of a free spirit. So it was becoming more stressful and um, I wasn't really enjoying it. And when you don't enjoy something, you tend to not stick to it, right? The moment that I saw that I was okay with just like eating out instead of cooking, I'm like, no, I have to really reassess and and change things so it works for me so my process is really more of a spontaneous whatever i feel like eating at the time uh whatever i have at home and just kind of you know feeling my way around the kitchen letting the ingredients in a way talk to me the experience of cooking almost feels like something takes over my body and i know this sounds kind of crazy but this i promise you this is kind of how it is right i will look through my fridge look through my pantry see what's there see what i feel like having it and i just start chopping you know like i'll start chopping my onion my garlic sauteing that honestly that's like my first step in every recipe that i make i just go transforming and transforming when you stop thinking so much and when you stop seeing the supposed to i'm supposed to be doing that or even following a recipe to the t instead of what feels right for you when you turn that off you allow inspiration to take over you allow your cooking muse to take over and to just guide you i find that the more that i shut out you know the supposed to the better my dishes come out. It feels almost like a um, magic in a sense, like sprinkle a little bit of this, sprinkle a little bit of that, and like, poof, you know. <laughs> I mean, nothing has exploded in my kitchen. The poof was more like poof of magic. <laughs> so um, I think the best way for me to show you a little bit of what that looks like is by making a recipe. This week I was in a mood and really, really like I was craving sweets big time. So I decided to make my favorite chocolate frosting. It's very, very basic, very simple ingredients and I'm gonna be showing you how to do it here. Now, here's the thing. I want you to test it out and see what it feels like to play around with the ingredients. I'm not gonna be giving you measurements over here because this is going to be almost like a little science experiment so you can actually feel so you can see for yourself what it's like to just let go and allow your taste buds to really guide you and your senses to guide you through the process so once we're done going over the ingredients i want you to pause this video go to your kitchen your pantry go check out what you have bring it over here and Let's get started. Your main ingredient is gonna be a nut or a seed butter. So over here I have um, sunflower seed butter. I got mine unsweetened. Uh, now this is very important because if yours is sweetened, you wanna make sure that you control the amount of sweetness that you add to your frosting, right? Every single nut butter over here will work. So if you wanna go with peanut butter, you can use peanut butter, you can use almond butter. Honestly, the sky's the limit. It will work just as well. It all depends on your preferences. Now our other main ingredient here is gonna be cacao powder. This is pure cacao powder, not sweetened. So if by any chance any of your ingredients here well, from these three at least, are sweetened, you want to make sure to take that into consideration, right? I have almond milk over here. You're not going to use that much of it, so don't worry about it if you just have like a little bit at home. To add the sweetness, I went with this uh, raw honey. So agave and maple are going to be your vegan options if you want to keep this uh, frosting vegan. So 
So the first step is adding that little sweetness and we're gonna do this with the honey. We're just gonna eyeball everything. I just really want to show you that it can be done. You don't have to measure anything. Let's start off like this, right? Gonna add our cacao. Depends how much cacao, how much chocolate you want. So at this point, I gave it a little bit of a mix. Um, it doesn't feel too chocolatey, let's say, yet. So I am going to add a little bit more, but feel free to uh, try it first and see if it does have enough chocolate for you already. As well as sweetness, right? Like I said, it's like a little bit of a science experiment, right? So let's add a little bit more of honey. I'm just trying to make it your own, you know? There's, there's absolutely no right or wrong over here. The thing when you add liquid into a nut butter, it will start to kind of, first it will look like it's separating a little bit, um, but just keep mixing it and you will see that it will come right back together. So I wanna show you at this point, um, as you can see, Right, it kind of still came back together. At this point for me, if you want to spread it into cake or something like that, it's still a little bit thick. This consistency is great if you want to make little truffles out of it. Um, it's actually kind of perfect for that, right? I did give it a taste also, and for me, honestly, since it is a frosting after all, um, I could use a little bit more sweetness. So I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna use a little bit more of milk also because I want mine to be a little bit more spreadable, and then I'm gonna come back and show you what that looks like. All right, so do you guys see this consistency and how beautiful it looks, and it's very spreadable now, right? Um, and I didn't do anything different when I turned off the camera. Honestly, I just turned it off so I could stir it without dropping everything over here. But look at that. You see what I mean? You can tweak it as much as your little heart desires. If you try it, you know, make sure to stop, try it, see if it needs more sweetness. Then you have, you add a little bit more honey. If you feel that it's not, like the chocolate is not deep enough, then you can go with your cacao. And if you feel that you still want a little bit, um, like softer and to be able to, I don't know, to be more liquidy, then just add more of the liquid. And if by any chance you overdo it and you feel that it's too liquidy, um, just add more of the nut butter. But for me, this is the perfect, look at that. This is the perfect texture, the color. It looks so rich and decadent. So as you can see, the cooking process can be something that is fun, that's enjoyable. It doesn't have to be following a recipe to the T. The way I came across this recipe, I read it once and then just kind of made it my own. And that's how you can turn a recipe from good to great because then you'll actually be personalizing it to your taste buds to how you like things and that's the beauty of being the chef because you have full control over everything that goes in there you have full control over the sweetness the richness um, the texture and just really make it your own so that you can fall in love with food again so you can fall in love with healthy eating so here is our final product once again look at this oh my gosh this excites me so much and it's so good it's really really good that gave you a little behind the scenes of what things are like for me to be honest that's how i do everything and i chose a simple basic mixing just mixing recipe because i didn't want to add too many steps cooking for me is my moment to just be just be by myself just me and my thoughts and allowing whatever needs to come up to come up right usually if i'm feeling stressed that's my sanctuary right there in the kitchen it always helps me feel better it always makes me feel more grounded i just am so grateful for every time that i step foot into my kitchen granted this is not my kitchen <laughs> Because of lighting issues, this is my office. I hope that answers your question as to what my process is like and that this serves as an invitation also for you to enjoy cooking, for you to come and play. Because this, guys, think about it. This is exactly what we used to do 
in like, um, I don't know, kindergarten, right? When allowing our curiosity to kind of take over, mixing things, trying it, mixing it again, adding this, adding that, just allowing whatever feelings come up to, you know, guide us through this masterpiece. I know that in the beginning it's kind of scary to do that and to just throw the rule book out the window and kind of do your own thing. Um, and that's actually why I created Deliciously Uncomplicated. My online course that teaches you step by step how to get organized, um, how to season and flavor, how to follow your intuition, and how to just make cooking more enjoyable so you can build that confidence and so you can get to that level where you are just allowing your creativity and your senses to take over and to guide you through this beautiful process called cooking. So I'm going to provide the link to Deliciously Uncomplicated on the description. Make sure to check it out. And uh, I can't wait to see you guys in the kitchen and to know about your cooking adventures. So let me know in the comments how this recipe worked for you. I hope you guys have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching this. And until next time.